Okay, here we go. Let's talk about how to do pH calculations of strong acids and bases. Remembering that strong acids and bases means we assume complete dissociation. Which means, for example, if you have 3.49 molar uh, hydrobromic acid, complete dissociation means that concentration of acid is assumed to be equal to concentration of hydrogen ion, at least for a monoprotic acid that only gives off one hydrogen per acid molecule, the idea being that each acid releases the same number of hydrogen ions. So here, let's go through that. So this means if we have pH of 3.49 molar HBr, we assume 3.49 molar HBr implies a concentration of hydrogen ion is equal to 3.49 moles per liter, aka 3.49 molar. So because of that, we're going to use the same old calculations we've done using the same assumptions that we have, which is that the pH is equal to negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration, at which is therefore negative log of 3.49 moles per liter, or at least negative log of 3.49. Technically, it doesn't matter if you include that M or not because uh, the pH doesn't have units. So negative log of 3.49 is that right there. So that's it. And uh, one of the things to be aware of is, wait, negative log and negative pH. So pH equals negative 0 0.54285427. And there's no units, it's just pH is just a number. Yes, a very strong acid can have a negative pH. It can be off the scale. So uh, in this case, three sig figs went into the calculation. Three sig figs got to come out. So pH equals negative 0 0.543. All right. So, you're going to follow the same kind of idea here. And with these other ones too, though I'll do a quick refresher, kind of how this goes. Mm, let's see, so pH and pOH of 0.35 molar HClO4. So, we assume hydrogen ion concentration is equal to 0 0.35 moles per liter, 0.35 molar. So pH equals negative log of hydrogen ion concentration, which means negative log of 0 0.35. Again, adding the molar is optional because there's not going to be units in the final answer. They'll all add it for completeness. And actually, I would still nonetheless recommend people put this here, not because it really affects the answer, because it makes it clear what the number is coming from and therefore giving you protection in the case of making a mistake on the test. Uh, let's see, so negative log 0.35, and that comes out to that. So pH equals, actually I'm going to, yeah, yeah, I'll put it here. So 0 0.45, and I'm going to round for sig figs. So that's actually, I'm going to stop at two sig figs, which means instead of 0.45, it should be 0.46. Now, I could take Kw equals hydrox, hydrogen ion times hydroxide concentration or whatever, just one times the other. Um, and then I could solve to get the hydroxide ion concentration and take negative log of hydroxide ion concentration to get pOH. But my personal favorite way is to remember that pH plus pOH equals 14, which means that if you want to get the POH, just subtract pH from both sides, because POH equals 14 minus pH. And since the pH was found to be 
0.46, we just do some quick math and it comes out to 0.54, or well, 13.54, so 14 minus 0.46. So this went to the hundredths place. Make sure your final answer goes to the hundredths place also because when you subtract, you got to follow the subtraction rules, and this is considered to have infinite significant figures, so you don't consider this when deciding how you're going to round. So POH equals 13.54. So I'm going to rewrite those both here just for ease. So PH equals 0 0.46. POH equals 13.54. These both go to hundreds place. That's how it should be. They should go to the same decimal place. All right, so that's how you go about doing that one. That's my recommended method. You're going to find a similar approach to be useful here. Reminder, when you type scientific notation into your calculator, use the parentheses or you will have problems. As in, so what was the number? 1.43 times 10 to the negative fourth. Any calculation you do with this number, put it in parentheses like that or you will have problems. Or at least I like to have problems. All right, anyway. Uh, and where did we go to these other ones? Calculate the concentration of hydroiodic acid needed to make a solution of the pH of 8.2. So this is simpler than one might think because we assume that, like I said earlier, concentration of acid is equal to the concentration of hydrogen ion. What we're really going to do is we're going to calculate the concentration of hydrogen ion and say hydrogen ion concentration equals acid concentration. So we're going to say hydrogen ion concentration is equal to 10 to the power of negative pH, like that. Which means hydrogen ion concentration, and let me add to that, so the hydroiodic acid concentration is equal to the hydrogen ion concentration, which is equal to 10 to the negative pH. So since this is equal to 10 to the negative pH, it's equal to 10 to the power of negative 8.2. So hydrogen ion concentration, remember uh, you may have seen earlier, you can do it the long way, as in 10 to the power of parentheses, negative 8.2, close parentheses, like that, and then change to scientific notation. Or you can use the shortcut way, which is second function, and then push the log button, because that activates this 10 to the x shortcut right here. And the same thing, negative 8.2, close parentheses, and there you go. Change to scientific notation, and you've got the same thing. So that's 6.3 zero nine five seven three four four five times ten to the negative ninth ninth molar hydrogen ion concentration which we are going to round to six point three times ten to the negative ninth molar hydrogen ion concentration which remind you since this is also equal to the concentration of a strong acid such as hydroiodic acid, then we can say not only is this equal to the concentration of the hydrogen ion, this is equal to the concentration of the acid. So I'm going to replace hydrogen ion concentration with that. Box this with our two sig figs, our result from starting with two sig figs up here, and we are good for this particular one you'll follow a similar pattern with this particular question here. Now, let's look at 13-7. One of the big things it said is that, yes, you assume hydrogen ion concentration is equal to acid concentration. Now, one of the big deals here regarding this is that this is a funny acid in the sense that it has two hydrogen ions, but it doesn't lose both in the same way. The first one comes off easily to produce HSO4 with a minus charge. However, it doesn't easily release the second one. So it does release some, but not very many. So in other words, we're going to assume that it only releases one hydrogen ion. 
which greatly simplifies our calculation because it allows us to say that concentration of H2SO4 remains the same as concentration of hydrogen ion. So for that reason, calculate the pH of 0.25 molar of this, we can say 0 0.25, whoops, I can't even write. Let's try that again. 0 0.25 molar hydrogen ion concentration implies 0 0.25 molar H2SO4 concentration. Or rather, I guess I should say it the other way around, 0.25 molar H2SO4 would imply 0.25 molar hydrogen ion concentration. Again, because we assume it only releases one of its two hydrogen ions. For that reason, we're going to say pH equals negative log of hydrogen ion concentration, same as we always do, and we'll just plug in the 0.25. So negative log of 0 0.25 molar, and then uh, equals, let's see, negative log of 0.25, that number. And since that's two sig figs, we'll round this to two sig figs. So 0 0.060205991 is the pH. And then rounding to two sig figs, pH equals 0 0.60. And that's it. Because pH doesn't have units. All right, so if you want to do that same kind of thing, like if we had been wanting to find the pOH, remember you got to take the pH plus pOH is 14, and then if you want to find the pOH, it's 14 minus the pH, so you'd have to show this kind of work applied down here. You'd be able to find what the pOH is, and indeed you'll be doing that here in this particular one. All right. So look at this 213-7C. And once you find the hydro hydrogen ion concentration for this, the pH of this. Again, we're assuming hydrogen ion concentration equals H2SO4 concentration, which means you're going to do the exact same thing that you did here. And in fact, uh, yeah, yeah, that's the only one like it on here. So that means you are literally just going to do 10 to the negative pH equals hydrogen concentration, which equals H2SO4 concentration. So I guess all it wants is hydrogen, hydrogen ion concentration, but because this can be said like this, we're just going to basically treat it as like we're just going to look at this portion of the calculation right here. So 10 to the negative... 2.84, we're going to round this to three sig figs, as you can tell. It will tell us what the hydrogen ion concentration is. So 10 to the negative 2.84 equals that. So let's put that in scientific notation. That. 1.45 times 10 to the negative third. So I'm just going to be for clarity. Hydrogen concentration equals that which equals, round it for three sig figs, that molar, don't forget your units, don't forget your chemical identity. All right, so that's that. Pretty straightforward. Familiar calculation. A lot of stuff on here should be quite familiar. Okay, so let's look at these these have in the past caused confusion because people get so used to doing this where you're dealing with hydrogen that when we throw this at them they forget that you have to treat it different from hydrogen because we're assuming that hydroxides are strong bases which means concentration of NaOH is equal to concentration of hydroxide ion because it releases all the hydroxides. 
So bear in mind though, you gotta pay attention to the fact that hydroxide and pH are, you have to do some calculations to get from one to each. They don't go directly. Here's what I mean. So we're gonna say, okay, fine. Hydroxide ion concentration equals 0.34 molar because of this, we can say this implies this. If we take negative log of 0.34 molar hydroxide ion, that's going to give us not the pH, but the pOH, which means you take negative log of 0.34, oops, and you're going to get this. I'm going to just change it to regular decimals right there. It's a little easier. So the pOH of 0 0.46, what are we going to round this to? Two sig figs. So two sig figs. So 0 0.468, 5, 2, whatever. 0 0.47 is the pOH. Remember, pH plus pOH equals 14. We want the pH, so we got to subtract the pOH from both sides. So pH equals pOH, whoops, equals 14 minus pOH. Which means pH equals 14 minus 0 0.47, which is, and if you have 14 minus 0.47, remember your answer is going to have to go to the hundreds place because this has infinite sig figs. 14 minus 0.47 is a pH of 13.53. So pH equals 13.53. So this, rather than this, would be your answer. This is a very common mistake people make, is they think that this is the answer. Okay, so made a mistake on the previous version. Let's fix this now. Um, so the hydroxide ion concentration for this strong base will be equal in concentration to I, I, all the hydroxides that were brought into the solution when this molecule was added. Now here's the thing, we assume if it's a strong base it dissociates completely, which means you'll notice there's two hydroxides per molecule. So unlike H2SO4, which releases only one hydrogen, for strong bases we assume they release all their hydroxide, which means calcium hydroxide is assumed to release one calcium ion and two hydroxide ions. That means the concentration of hydroxide is twice as much as the concentration of the original calcium hydroxide. That means 0 0.92 molar calcium hydroxide, let's do the stoichiometry style, for every one mole of calcium hydroxide, there is two moles of hydroxide, which means you times this by two, and which is 1.84. Here, here I'll prove that. 0.92 times two, 1.84. 1.84 molar hydroxide ion is produced by dissolving this in water. So here's my strategy. I have my hydroxide ion concentration. I'm going to use the negative log to turn this into pOH. And then once I have pOH, I can use that pH plus pOH is 14 to turn pOH into pH. That's my strategy. So let's do it. So negative log of hydroxide ion concentration equals pOH which means negative log of 1.84 molar hydroxide is equal to pOH, which is negative log of 1.84 is equal to that. Negative 0 0.26. And let's... Uh, Let's, see, let's go ahead and round this for significant figures. Now, we started with two sig figs. And we ended with two sig figs. This isn't our final answer, but this gets us a lot further toward our final answer. 
So I'll continue leaving a few more digits in there. Two, six, four, eight, one, seven, eight. Though it would be understandable if someone were to choose to round this off here on a test, you give credit either way. Um, so anyway, that's the POH. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the next step. I just did his. I found the pH or the POH. Now I need to get the pH. So remember, pH plus pOH equals 14, which means that pH, so you subtract pOH from both sides, is equal to 14 minus pOH, which means pH equals 14 minus this. Minus, and then it's a negative number, so it's minus negative 0 0.26. And I, I could leave it there or leave a few extra decimals in there, 48178. It's not going to really change a lot because here's the thing. pH equals 14.2648178. So if you have subtract a negative number, that's equal to adding it. So that's where this comes from. And I don't know why I didn't finish the pH right there. Let's fix that. Let's round that now. So yes, this was three sig figs, but you started with two sig figs. So how are we gonna, where are we gonna end this? Let's go back and look at how to end this. So you know what, I take the back what I said earlier. We are going to look at what we have and say, well, we can call this just 0.26, which means we'll call this 0.26, which means we'll leave it as 0.26 as on here as well. So 14.26. So two sig figs produced a two sig fig would have produced a two sig fig answer here, but I left it as this in order to give a more accurate answer here. And then I rounded here. And then I call it 0.26, and then, because I would have had to decide how to round here, so I'm gonna to decide to round based on this, two sig figs, and leaves it going to the hundreds place. So I'm gonna leave it going to the hundreds place. And this is my final answer, 14.26. Out based on what has been shown here. This should be very straightforward. You're gonna just simply take 10 to the negative 10.42 and you're gonna have hydroxide concentration because, ten, sorry, 10 to the negative 10.42 will give hydronine concentration. So just be aware pH does not give this, it gives hydronine concentration. So most likely you'd wanna change this to pOH first and then calculate what hydroxide is from the pOH. So I would suggest take pH, convert to pOH, and then once you have pOH of whatever, 14 minus this, you're going to convert pOH to hydroxide ion concentration. There's other ways to get there, but this is what I would recommend as being the easiest. All right, and when I say other ways to get there, you could theoretically turn pH into hydrogen ion concentration. And then using the KW formula, you can turn hydrogen ion concentration into hydroxide ion concentration. So that is a possibility. Now, uh, let's skip ahead to the last one here. Calculate the concentration of strontium hydroxide needed to make a solution with a concentration or with a pH of 12.50. All right, well, this is gonna follow along similar things there. A pH does not tell us the hydroxide and concentration, it tells us the hydrogen concentration. So, or at least it leads us to it. So we gotta keep in mind you got to work with pOH. Remembering that pOH plus pH equals 14, which means we're going to convert this to pOH so that we can get this. So pOH equals 14 minus pH, which means pOH equals 14 minus 12.50, which means pOH is 1.50. Four sig figs, three sig figs, I know, but you don't count sig figs. Remember, infinite sig figs for the 14 here. So that means you notice this goes to hundreds place. Make sure this goes to the hundreds place as well. That way pH and pOH go to the same decimal place. And I just now realize that I wrote the... Oh, yeah, okay, I wrote the correct thing. So anyway, um, there's no units as a reminder. pOH and pOH both are just numbers. They do not have units. Okay, now, that being what that is... Uh, the next thing to deal with is turn this into this. So we're going to find hydroxide ion concentration. So 
If you take 10 to the negative pOH, you get hydroxide ion concentration. So it means 10 to the negative 1.50 is equal to hydroxide ion concentration. Actually, I'm going to do it this way. Hydroxide ion concentration equals 10 to the negative 1.50, which is equal to whatever the calculator says it is. Uh, 10 to, oops, 10 to the negative 1.50 will give that, and we're going to, let's see, yes, we're going to round because this is going to get us toward our final answer, so 0 0.30316, whatever, notice we have 3 sig fix, so I'm going to call it 3 sig fix, so I'm going to say 0 0.0316 molar hydroxide ion. Now here's the thing, you'll notice there's two hydroxides on every strontium. So consider what happens if you put strontium hydroxide into water, it's going to split into one strontium ion and two hydroxide ions. So here's the thing, we need to understand that for every one strontium hydroxide there's two ions. Or, put another way, there's only half as many of these as there are of these, so you've got to divide this by two. Now, a way to make that a little easier to see, let's take this stoichiometry style. So 0 0.0316 molar, moles per liter of hydroxide ion times stoichiometry style. For every two moles of hydroxide, there is one mole of strontium hydroxide. Oops, and I just realized I forgot the number in units. Okay, the thing is not cooperating. Cooperate you. There we go. So one mole of SROH2. There we go. So that is telling us what I just said earlier. There's only half as much of this as there is of this, so divide this by two. So when you look at this, look what happens. You take this times 1, divided by 2, just like I told you. So 0 0.0316 divided by 2 equals 0 0.0158 moles per liter of strontium hydroxide. Oops, forgot the little parentheses there. Now you can't, that's, okay, that's nowhere near neat enough to be acceptable from a student, so I shouldn't do that either. So strontium hydroxide. Now, remember, if it's less than 0.1, you have to use scientific notation. So you got to move the decimal once, twice, so it's going to be times 10, and then you get a second, which is why it says this. So that's 1.58 times 10 to the negative second moles per liter. You can either write moles per liter or just capital M. Strontium, oops, almost forgot the parentheses, hydroxide. That would be our answer. So to review, what do we do here? We're given a pH, convert to pOH, because pOH tells us hydroxide. Once we have the pOH, calculate hydroxide and con uh, concentration. And then notice that there's only half as much of the original molecule as there is of hydroxide. So there's two hydroxides for every molecule, so use some stoichiometry to tell us that you take the hydroxide and concentration, divide by two, to get the final answer. And that is how you get the concentration of this, needed to make that pH. All right, that should take care of it, guys.